Kathy, in my January letter, I raised my Dow forecast to 55,000. So 45,000 was already considered crazy by most people. And um, you know, I, I still saw potential for even more than that. So my S&P was raised to 7,000 and my NASDAQ number is now 24,000. I raised that later on. My Russell 2000 number is 3,300. I had to have had a 3,000 target on that and raised it to 3,300 back then. So, so it's crazy. I mean, from here to 3,300 on the Russell is um, probably 55%, just below 60%. Mm. Uh, and I think we can get there this year. What you're seeing in the economy is a sign that the economy is slowing, no question about it. The consumer is starting to run out of gas, no question. He's he's still spending, but he's having to take more out of savings, and the savings is being depleted. Um, you know, they're spending. You know, if you look at the monthly numbers, and they're spending more than the than the income coming in. Um, so credit debt is going up. Um, you know, you're seeing delinquencies go up. So a lot of signs that we're you know we're getting to the end of this cycle. But then we get news after, you know, after they got all worried about recessions here and we got a surprisingly good consumer number, uh, consumer spending number. We've had good inflation numbers. Um, you know, the service sector looks today's service sector ISM uh, was 55. So that looks like it's still fine. Manufacturing's below 50. So that, you know, manufacturing is is in recession probably or at least, you know, slowing. Um, but the point is, I think we have enough information out there to say we're in a soft landing. Um, it's going to be a narrative, I think, from here into the election where it's going to be soft landing, feds on board easing and inflation's falling or inflation's continuing to slow. I think you're going to see finally, as this thing comes out of this this pullback and goes to new highs, you're going to have people finally getting on board because the Fed, with the Fed easing, I think what you're going to get from the institutions is a view that we now can look out to 25 and 26 and say the economy is going to pick up speed, uh, inflation is still going to be under control, uh, and that's very bullish. So it's kind of a Goldilocks scenario that I think you get. It won't last long. You know, that's what they believe. They can start building in higher earnings for 25, which is what now is going to drive the market. It's not this year's earnings anymore. It's next year they're looking at. Mm. I think you're going to have you end up growing earnings, lower interest rates, and and lower inflation. And I think um because so many people are in the same boat, skeptical, uh, you can have short covering, you can have people having to get on board, people moving from defensive to more aggressive, um, and and the momentum of the market's gonna ultimately lead to FOMO. We will see a commodity cycle following the bus. So in you know beginning in 26, probably later 26, and all the way through the balance of the decade, you could take oil to $500. I think oil next year can get to $30, but by the end of the decade, it could be at 500. Um, copper could get down, I'm calling for copper this year at six, could get down to a buck in, you know, somewhere near a buck in the bust. And then by the end of the decade, could be, you know, 20 or 30. And I think this year, and it can spill into the first part of the next year, I have um, a target on my gold of 3,000. Mm. I'm likely to raise that by several hundred dollars. Uh, I think it's conservative at this point, given that gold's at 2,500. Um, my silver call is $75. I, it had been 60. And I raised that in my last letter. So I think um, silver can go to 75, let's say between now and the end of the first quarter. Um, and gold to you know three thousand. I wouldn't be surprised if it's you know several hundred dollars higher than that. In the bust, almost all assets will go down except maybe U.S. Treasuries and you know uh, cash. But um, in the bust, I think gold can probably if it if it goes, let's say it goes to thirty three, thirty four hundred, it might come all the way back 
here, you know, back to uh, where it broke out, you know, 2100, 2200, somewhere in there. Um, silver at 75, it could easily come back 50%, maybe 75% from there, because uh, it's a much more industrialized, demand driven uh, commodity. So, so I think they'll get hit hard if the stock markets hit 80% and silver drops. 70 percent you've outperformed them but it's a it's a big hit right? right so and i don't know that it'll come that far it might only go 50 but uh it's not something that you can um just buy and hold and say i'm not worried about the bust i think you're going to be very upset if you just kind of sit there and as i say oh, it's by like, volatility it's kind of it's kind of like standing on the south rim of the grand canyon and looking across to the north rim and thinking you can straight walk straight across and there's this canyon in between that you don't want to ignore.